Hi grade 11s, let's learn about the quadratic formula. Okay, so to summarize for you guys, um, in grade 9, you guys learned about quadratic trinomials. Okay, this is a quadratic trinomial. I just um, included A and B and C to represent the numbers that you guys would have seen in it. Okay, then so as I was saying in grade 9, when you see seen these quadratic trinomials, then what you had to do is you had to factorize them by putting them into two brackets. That's what you learned how to do. In grade 10, we went a little further. We said same concept where you factorize in it by putting it into two brackets. And um, this time we included a value that wasn't 1. So in grade 9, it was just a value that was 1 here in this place of A. And then in grade 10, we made it a little more difficult. We said, what if it's 2 or 3? Now find the factors for us. Okay. In both grades, in addition to factorizing it, we asked you guys to solve for the possible numbers that we could sub into here and here that will give us an answer of zero. So you took your factors and you took each bracket and you said equal to zero and then you solved that equation, right? That's what you learned up until grade 10. Now this year, what we say in is, in addition to those concepts that you learned, what if we expand your knowledge a little bit further and say there's a formula, this one over here, that can work out the answers to this. Okay, when I say the answers, I mean to figure out the roots or the two numbers that can give you that if you substitute into the place of x can give you zero. That's what it's trying to do. Okay, now um, lots of you are going to probably ask, ma'am, where does this formula come from? Okay, in order to understand where it comes from, you would have to do completing the square. Okay, it's not necessary to know how to get from here to here. You just need to know that this is standard form. You have to always get your equation in standard form. You have to know this formula. You have to know how to substitute into the. If anyone is interested in figuring out this formula, look under the section called completing the square. Learn how to complete the square. Or you could just wait for me to complete the teach you how to complete the square okay and then if you're still interested in getting from here to here then I'll show you how to actually complete the square and get here okay um, one more thing I need to mention you would see over here there's a plus and minus sign why is there a plus and minus sign you guys know that when you are square rooting something there are two possible solutions the possible uh, the positive one and the negative one and that's what we're doing over there so let's show you guys how this works okay this is the formula please learn it you should know it off by heart you should also know that when you are substituting you substitute into brackets let's show you an example here's my examples okay it says solve for x so let's scribble over here okay my first question says x squared minus x plus 1 equals to 0. So you always double check that this is in standard form. Um, I'm going to go through this entire video and then towards the end I'm going to just include for the learners who have a silver calculator or the now new white calculator how to work it out in there. Okay, but yeah, let's continue for all of us that don't have the silver calculator. How would you do this? Right, so I told you x is equal to minus b plus minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Let's highlight the color code for you. In front of you, there's a invisible 1. That's our a value. That's going to go here and here. Okay. And, oops. In front of the negative x, the invisible number for all the people that would like it, is a negative 1. So that goes in the place of this and in the place of this. And then lastly, we have a c value of 1. Okay, that's our constant value that we see over here. This one here. And that's going to go in the place of this part over here. So all we do is substitute, like I just said. Remember I said with brackets, B value, brackets, brackets, brackets. Please don't forget them. 
And the most important part of the bracket would have to be this one here. If it's negative and you type in without a bracket negative 1 squared, it means something completely different to bracket negative 1 bracket squared, okay? Here it would mean that this negative also gets squared. If you don't put the bracket, your answer is going to be negative, okay? Because what's going to happen? Let me show you quickly. I'm deviating. See here? Right? This means only the 1 is getting squared, and then it will put the negative in front of it. That's why you get a negative 1. And if you do this, okay, it means the whole thing is getting squared. Negative 1 times negative 1 giving me positive 1. So very important. Okay, back to here. Right? Now you type this in on your calculator. You agree with me there's no plus and minus button on your calculator. So you're going to do one at a time. So you start with the fraction button. Okay. typed in everything oh no this one is giving me math error should have started with an easier one but anyway when it says math error okay what does this mean it would mean let's let's talk about what math error means on a calculator one it would mean that you put a square root under i mean a negative under a square root that's the one option and the other option is you made your denominator equal to zero let's go back over here can you see my denominator is definitely not zero so it's got to be the square root being negative let's go double check what my square root amount is actually See so here my square root amount is underneath the square root is negative 3. Can I have a negative under the square root? No, I cannot. We learned that that would give me a non-real number. So in this particular question, I should have started with another one. I just copied uh, questions from a textbook and went with it. But anyway, for um, if this square root part is negative, then you're going to just write no or non-real solutions or not applicable. Let me explain that again. Why is it non-real? Because under the square root, this part over here works out to negative 3. And we don't want a negative under a square root, so therefore it doesn't work out. There's no real solutions. What does that mean? It means that if you had to plot this on the Cartesian plane, there's a Cartesian plane, you cannot plot something on the x-axis. It would either be somewhere here, or it would be somewhere here. There are no roots. It's, remember this here is a parabola, isn't it? Because if it's in this format with x squared, this is a parabola. So if I had to draw a parabola for it, it's just not going to touch on the um, x-axis. It would be somewhere below or somewhere above, smiley face there. That's what it would mean visually. Okay, let me find another one that actually works. Hopefully the second one does. Okay, so our, I don't have to highlight that for you, our values are, let's go, our B value, from here you see that it's in standard form, B value is this 3, 3 squared, A is 2, C is negative 8. This should have a minus there, cut, covered away. Okay, I'm going to type this in. I always start with the fraction button. You see, this time it actually gives me an answer. X is equal to, but now you guys are not familiar with answers like this, okay? Because this here looks so weird. You guys have never solved for something and got an answer like that. In this case over here, this is called simplest third form. It is acceptable. It's perfectly fine. It is a real number. It's just irrational, okay? So you're allowed to have a number like this. It's in simplest third form. 
okay? If they ask you to change it to a decimal, press this button over there, and there it is in decimal format, okay? I'm going to go back because remember we just did the plus part. We want to get the minus part. Don't clear everything from your calculator. Just press the side button, okay? So side, 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 until I get to the plus sign. I'm pressing delete, and I'm changing it to a minus. That's what happened happened over there. If I press equal, it gives me the other solution. x equals negative 3 minus, oh no, what did I do? Oh no, plus 73 over 4. And I put the minus in the wrong place. Here is the minus. Okay, that's what it is. So what happened? If I, saw, if I wanted to find the answers or the two possible roots for this, these are our roots. Let's do another one. I'm going to try H from my list over here. P to P plus 1 equals 2. Is this in standard form? No, it's not. How do I know that? There's no P squared. Okay, so what I want to do first is get it to standard form. Multiply, multiply. Oh, sorry. 2p times 2p giving me 4p squared, 2p times 1 giving me 2p, and if I bring this over, it must give me minus 2 equals 0. Okay, you can leave it like this, or if you wanted to, you can divide everything by 2. I'm going to do that because it's bothering me a bit that 2 can go into all of them, okay? So I'm going to say this is 2p squared plus p minus 1. Okay. Um, in this case, because we're not working with variable x, I'm going to name it p. Okay. Now we're going to substitute. Okay, I'm out of space on this page. Just continue here. p value is 1. A value is 2, C value negative 1. Okay, let's type this in. Hopefully this one here works. What did I forget? It's got a squid. This time here I've got p is equal to half. I go back. p is equal to negative 1. Okay. That means if you wanted to, we can get this into factors. We did not have to show this part of it. Instead, at the step over here, you can open up two brackets because they're perfect factors, perfect rational factors. Okay. Stick with me, I'm almost done with this video. See this value over here, I've got p minus 1. You're taking this back over, it becomes p plus 1. Okay, let me just draw a line here so no one gets confused, they're separate. And then see this one over here, p is equal to half. See this 2 in the denominator, put it in front. And see this 1 over here from the numerator, it's positive. If you took it over, it's negative. Those are our two solutions. Can you just scratch this part out for you guys? Okay, let's say it was here. Should have done that earlier. Okay, there it is. I just wrote it up there. That means from here I can say p is equal to half or p is equal to negative 1. What does this mean? It means that if I sub in half into the place of p and p and I work this out, we'll get the answer to or if I sub in negative 1 into the place of P and B, we'll get the answer to. That's what it means. I hope that this video helped you guys and that it's going to help you guys even later when you watch this again for a second time. Okay, I hope that it helps you guys. Um, for all the learners that have the normal grey or blue or pink Casio calculator, whether it's the older version that looks somewhat like mine or the newer version where it's more square, you can stop over here. If there's any learner that has a silver calculator, that's the one I have, okay? Or any learner that has the new white calculator, I want you guys to continue watching, okay? 
our calculators, this one over here, has a equation mode, okay? So it's programmed with more functions. It can do more things. And one of the things that it can do is you don't have to work out the quadratic formula. It is programmed to do that. So let's try this one over here. Okay, what you do is you're going to go for it to look for your mode, press that, and you're looking for equation. I think on the white one, it's also the same. So you press option 5 for equation. That's given you a whole bunch of equation options. I'm looking for option 3 because it goes ax squared plus bx plus c. That's what I told you we're working with. So option 3. So it has space for your a, your b, and your c. So your a is to press the equal to to get to the next one. My b is 3, so I just type in 3 equals Okay, and it programs it there. And lastly, my C is negative 8. So negative 8 equals. When you press equal again, let me just raise this up. When you press equals again, it gives you the answer. There's your solution without typing the whole thing. There it is. And if you press equals again, it gives you your other answer. Okay, uh, I think I made a mistake earlier in the video. Oh, no, I didn't. I didn't. What it did earlier is it took the negative from here and here. Okay, earlier. Negative from here and here and put it here outside. Therefore, this is a positive. This is a positive. But either way, this and this mean the same thing. If you go one step further, because we're going to learn about something called maxima and minima, and you're going to learn um, in or functions with your parabola, the turning point. You did touch on this. If you press it equals one more time, it gives you the x value of the turning point, or your, and this here is the y value of your turning point, your maxima or minima. Hope that this helped you. Okay, so just to recap, press the mode button, you press it again, five, three, type in your ABC, press equal, and press equal, and you'll get your two solutions. Hope that that helped. And I'm done.